y'all, welcome back. And if today's your first time checking out one of my videos, my name is JD and I was a 20 year addict and career criminal. But today I am a recovery coach, a peer support recovery specialist, and a smart recovery facilitator. I own my own recovery coaching business here in Daytona Beach and I love helping other people get out of that darkness that I was lost in for so long. Today's interview is gonna be a really interesting one. I got to sit down with a good friend of mine, Gabby from The Wolf Project. She is actually the founder of The Wolf Project. And I think you guys are really going to take an interest in what it is that she does. And for those of you who have been here for a while, y'all know what time it is. Let's go! Hey everybody, welcome. Today we have a really special guest. Like if you had to ask me to list out a list of the people that I consider to be personal heroes, Gabby from The Wolf Project would absolutely be on there because she is actually in real time, in real life, making a difference when it comes to protecting kids. And that's something that's near and dear to my heart. You guys know that. A lot of us agree on this on this platform. In this community, we tend to go really hard when it comes to protecting children. So I want to introduce you guys to Gabby and I want her to tell you guys what The Wolf Project is all about. Gabby, thank you for taking the time to do this today. Thank you so much for that introduction. That was amazing. It's absolutely earned, my friend. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. So I've known you for a little while, like on a different platform over on TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, we've been mutuals for a while on there and I absolutely love the work that you do. And I thought that my community would be really hype about it too. Cause I know you beautiful animals feel the same way that we do about this. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Gabby, will you tell us what The Wolf Project is? Yeah, so The Wolf Project originally started out as a network of bait accounts um, that interact with each other so that they look more realistic and they are more effective at what they do. Um, once a person incriminates themselves, then we report it to law enforcement. These days, we still have the bait network. Um, we're moving more in the direction of um, kind of just data collecting and education efforts and then actually exposing trafficking rings um, by doing like humanitarian aid and investigative work with tactical forces. Um, so we definitely are still doing the bait network. We still have that. We still train people on how to do that, what the laws are around it, all the things. Um, but we, we've just got so many different avenues that we're kind of branching out into now. So that's definitely the, the basis of what we're doing. So I worked with GhostSec. Do you know who GhostSec is? Uh -uh. They're like a branch of, of Anonymous. And we worked together for a while. I had a group of people and we were exposing files in their, in their communities. Like we would find them, like baiting them. And it was purely off Facebook. And we would expose them to, you know, their wife, their boss, their churches. Mm -hmm. A lot of them churches, super uh -huh. actively involved. And, um, you know, we just let everybody in their community know what they were doing online, but we weren't working with law enforcement. Like I, I had warrants, uh, and I was concerned about my warrants at the time, but it was something that we could do, uh, to try to like make a dent. And, uh, I think it's super intriguing that you guys are actually training people actively on how to use the data that you collect for law enforcement. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's definitely been, it's an interesting road. Um, and, I try, and I don't want to get too political or anything, but, you know, you see all of these really cool uh, Netflix shows and all the things of where they're hunting down these pedophiles and they're doing what we're doing and they're doing so much, they're doing great things. Um, but law enforcement, it, it makes it look like law enforcement works with them so well. And law enforcement rarely works with us easily you know they're always very skeptical and they have the right to be i'm not saying that they don't um they, they definitely should check out our credibility and what our you know ethics are and all the things um but we've just definitely struggled trying to get people or trying to get law enforcement to be on our side and to hear us out and to listen to us because the moment they find out that it's a bait account and it's not an actual child they just check out but we have serial offenders like we will have our network of bait accounts and one chomo will hit up no joke 11 of them just go through the followers and just just a serial offender and we will present that that data their name their address their their workplace and show all the things of all the incriminating evidence perfectly laid out and they're like no thanks you know and that's been the most frustrating part about it but 
you know, we, we're, we've been talking about, and I talked about the tactical force earlier about setting up sting operations. Hey, it's just an, it's just a, it's an iffy one because you don't want to mess up any investigations that are already going on. And we've tried our best to work with law enforcement, but, um, at the end of the day, they're either going to hear us or they're not but justice is going to be served regardless. And so if that means that we have to expose them to their churches and to their workplace and to their spouses or whatever, then that's what we have to freaking do. And if law enforcement and the public is pissed about that, then so be it. Because at the end of the day, if they're not going to do anything about it, they should have listened to us the first time. And that's just kind of where we're headed with things. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't imagine that they would want to be incredibly cooperative with, there's almost like a vigilante angle Right. What you're doing, but it's so necessary because I don't think people understand the sheer magnitude of how many people are out there preying on kids. It's insane. It is actually insane. The fact that I could pull up my laptop right now and within five seconds get a hit, I swear to you, I promise I could pull up my laptop right now and get a hit within a couple of seconds. These beta accounts, they're up for a day and they've already got somebody asking to follow them and asking them for you know, photos or whatever. Um, and they think that these children are 11, 12, 14 year old girls and the things that they're saying, I mean, it's, it's sick. It's absolutely insane. It's insane that our law, our, our justice system is just like, nah, you know, we got to do something. We got to do better. So do you think that they take the information that you gather and they do further investigations or do you think they just disregard what you're doing? Um, I think it goes, Either way, um, it just depends on what law enforcement, you know, we're dealing with, what agency or uh, whatever. We do get phone calls from DHS. I just I have a phone call later today with a special agent in the Army um, to discuss some reports that we've made. Um, but usually it's me going toe to toe with these guys <laughs> because they're like, and I get it because these Netflix shows, they're, you know, mostly men sometimes. Um, I know undercover underage has a really great uh, female force, but, um, they see someone like me leading this and I'm a young female. I don't have a military background. I have my reasons for that. Um, and they just completely like, mm, you know, you're just a vigilante and, and you know, you're not educated and you're going to hurt it and you're putting your, yourself at risk. And I basically just told the last special agent that I talked to, I said, I don't remember you being my daddy and you don't give me permission on what to do with, um, my own safety. That's up to me. And he said, well, you don't understand. We get, um, you, we get people who are trying to track us down all the time. I said, yeah, exactly. Me too. And he said, yeah, but we just think it's funny because we know we can handle it. And I said, I think that's absolutely hilarious. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, he thinks that I'm out here just bubble gum and pink tutus <laughs> and just la di da, you know, whatever. So, I mean, yeah, we've had our frustrations with them, but um, sometimes it goes up the ladder and sometimes it doesn't. But we're going to keep fighting and I keep encouraging my people. I say, we are paving the way. It's going to suck. Um... It, it's not going to be fun and people are going to give us a lot of resistance. But guess what? Once we build a name for ourselves, it will flow. We just have to keep at it, you know? Well, I don't see any quit in you at any point. You've been at this for a while now and it's it's inspiring. Uh, I appreciate that because every day I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm yeah. sick of this. <laughs> but so yeah. The reason that I stopped, there were, there were multiple reasons that I stopped working with GoSec and the group of people that I was working with. One of them was the, the uh, Pulse nightclub shooting happened. And pretty much everybody from Anonymous was like, nope, full stop. We're putting all of our efforts into shutting down terrorist cells that are operating through social media in the U.S., which, understandable, 1,000%, I was for it. The reason that I didn't continue after that was my mental health had gotten so bad from seeing the things that would come into these DMs from yeah. these animals to yeah. people that they thought were 13, 12, 14. And, you know, there was no confusion. Like one of the first questions is, so you don't care that I'm only 12 years old? No, baby, you're mature for your age was right. like something that was often said. And, yeah. uh, bro, it just sunk me. It sunk me as a survivor of, of childhood sexual assault myself to see the sheer magnitude of numbers mm -hmm. and how dark the stuff that people would send somebody that they fully assumed and thought was a child just did something hard to my heart. Do you struggle with that? Yeah. Yeah. So bad. Um, I, 
I, I don't I don't actively do it anymore. And it's tough enough to see the evidence that's submitted to me before it gets submitted to law enforcement. Um, and we we do have a pretty high turnover rate. You know, people may not necessarily leave the organization as a whole, but they'll say, hey, I've got to step away for a little bit. Um, and, you know, I don't know how much you know about my background, but I, I was not a victim of pedophilia. I have a history with sexual assault. Um, <laughs> but from people my in, within my age group. Um, and I've definitely been approached by older men, but nothing ever physically happened to me. Um, so I can't imagine what it's like to be reliving some of, some of these most traumatic moments of someone's life going through it, because it is tough for me. Um, I don't, that's why I don't do it actively anymore. I teach people how to do it. I, I prepare them for it and I give them the resources that whenever they do hit that, rock bottom with it that we can help them and pick them back up but yeah it's tough it's really tough i did did it for a good decent while and it sent me into a spiral i was in a really Mm -hmm. bad place mentally emotionally spiritually you you just it taps you into some dark places and i wanted to talk i know that you've talked a lot about having some form of psychic abilities i was wondering if you would Mm -hmm. compound on that yeah, so I am clairvoyant, meaning that I get visions, I see the messages that come through. Um, and I have a couple other clair abilities too, like clairsentience, meaning that the knowledge just comes to me. Um, but the main reason I started the Wolf Project is because when I was 19, I randomly started getting visions um, or acknowledging them that they were visions. And they were of, I, I won't get into it because it is pretty rough, um, but they were of children being trafficked and kind of like the act itself. And these girls were crying out, you know, they're screaming and they're crying and they're being held down, you know? Um, and so when the first couple visions came in of that happening, um, I shut down. I did three days. I didn't eat. I didn't sleep. I almost ended my life. Um, I, I had my boyfriend at the time, he broke down the door and made me shower, but I was completely nonverbal for three days. And I would dry heave over the toilet because the visions were so bad. Um, and, uh, you yeah, the clairvoyancy really has, uh, that's kind of kickstarted the whole thing. I knew that there was, that was going to be a purpose in my life. I didn't know at the time how or what it would look like, but, um, yeah, yeah, that's definitely kind of why I'm here is a clairvoyancy. So is there any way that you can measure how many people your organization has actually helped, how many kids, how many people have been put away. Do you have any numbers behind it? Yeah, so the Wolf Project is brand new. So we started actively taking members back in January. Um, And so we don't have any arrests. We have some people that we've inspired and they've gotten arrests before, um, which is great. But with the Wolf Project, I think we're making um, 12 reports a week. So, and we're talking to around 60 different chomos a week. 60? Yes. Now, is that like on a spiraling basis? Is that a rotating thing or are they the same? Yeah, some are new and then some are current. Yeah, constant. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. I think so too. Yeah, it's crazy. And we only have, I think, 100 active people. Um, And then last week we had... 22 active accounts. So 22 people who were actively reaping last week and every single one of them got hits. And then obviously with those numbers, we had multiple of those accounts who had multiple um, chomos in their, in their DMs. Yeah. It's really bad. Okay. So you just mentioned reaping. So I I would like to ask you if you would explain your TikTok name. Yeah. (laughs) So my TikTok name is the original Reaper double zero. It's actually my Instagram too. Um, so when I started making, um, videos about what I do and kind of what's going on, someone commented that, you know, they call me the Reaper and it just kind of caught on. Everyone in the comment section was like, it's harvest time, baby. The Reaper's back, you know? So, uh, I just, I just stuck with it. We put it on some t-shirts and people liked it. So here we are. That's what we're doing. That's so awesome. So it's so cool to see how this has, has grown and it's grown so much since just January. Yeah. And like I, I 
watch, you know, because we're mutuals, I watch a lot of the stuff like that you post on TikTok, not just what you have to say, because I find what you present fascinating. Your content has always grabbed me, but I look in your comments and there's so many people that are cheering and supporting what you do. And I find that so amazing to be a part of. What are your plans for the future for the Wolf Project? Oh God, that's a good one. You know, I'm about to go to vet school. I don't know if you knew that or not. I didn't I know that. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm actually about to go to vet school. Um, I am in active training for, you know, the tactical force part of it. And we have six women who are in active training right now to prepare to set up sting operations and things like that. Our main focus moving forward is to use the leads generated by the bait network to um, undercover trafficking rings and traffickers. Um, we definitely are going to continue reporting people who incriminate themselves. Um, but I think we're moving more in a direction of focusing on exposing trafficking because that was what my heart was originally. TikTok kind of took it in a different direction to begin with. Um, but I talked to my crew last night actually, and they're all in. So we have a female tactical force, we have a co-ed tactical force, and then we have a male tactical force. And we are all in active training right now, getting ready to take these guys down and do what it takes to make sure that they never see the light of day again. Yes, I love <laughs> it. And I see some of your training videos. Uh, you post videos of you training actively. And there's a lot of men that come and say diminishing things. And I want to punch them. I think they have punchable faces. Even the ones who don't have profile pictures, I know their faces are punchable. You can tell they by the comments. In profile pictures, every time. No. That's my comment. I'm like, let me see your face. Let's see your <laughs> face. They cool. It's really hard for them to take pictures in their mother's basement. The lighting's bad. They don't they don't want you to see. They don't hurt my feelings any. I'm not offended by people who can't even post their own content, you know? And that's the thing. Like, you have so... And that's the wild part about this is the haters that are on my page. Like, what is there to hate about this? How could people make a problem about me not wanting children to be harmed and traumatized? What's bad about that? But people always have an opinion. I think <laughs> those people need their hard drive checked, to be honest with you. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, and you know, what's even crazier and maybe this is inappropriate to say, but, um, hopefully you can edit it out if it is. No, say, say the inappropriate thing. We want the inappropriate thing. But I have never seen a chomo send a dick pic that had a decent dick. Never. It is always the most ugly thing I've ever seen in my life. And so... I'm just saying, I don't know if there's a correlation there. Causation equals correlation, but I'm just saying. You know, if people are defending these guys, I have a feeling they're in that category. I don't want to say anything that's offensive to you at all whatsoever. So please don't take this the wrong way. I've seen a lot of dicks. Like, I think I've probably seen more dicks than you. I'm, that's not a character judgment on you at all whatsoever. But I've been to prison. I, I've been to a lot of county jails, a lot of prisons. And you see a lot of pipe in prison. So I think that, like, I would be an involuntary, like non-consensual dick expert at this point, per se. Uh, and I 100% agree with you because you shower, like in prison, you shower in a long cement hallway with just shower head, shower head, shower head. I got big shoulders, sis. My shoulders are big. <laughs> like, bro, I got naked dude here, naked dude here. I'm just trying to get clean. I'm like trying to stand sideways. But if you stand too sideways, your buttock is exposed. And if they turn to wash them, it's none of it's a good deal. So I've seen way too many. So like the the chomos that we knew were chomos in there. Yeah. It's weird, awful, little ugly. The fuck are you packing, bro? Right. Absolutely Every not. Every time. Is there, it looks like is the there, fucking Alaskan bullworm. Yeah. Is there a correlation between having a tiny little button in the fur and liking kids? We need to know. S some science person help us. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> I wanted to add, <laughs> we went way sideways and I love it. I'm so here for that. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So as far as like parents, parents whose kids are, are trying to be on social media. Uh, I know that like, I don't want to even ask you, like, I don't know if you want to say what platforms you're actively reaping on or what you're not. Uh, because I don't want to expose what you're doing. And if some weirdo watches this go, Oh, I'll avoid that. But 
Is it pretty much all platforms? Yeah, we're everywhere. What, I mean, as far as, what do you think has the most predators on it from what you've seen? Yeah, so, <laughs> most predators. I will say every platform has predators. We have hits on Spotify, man. Like, come on. You can't even How listen you to even music. How do you do that? What? I don't even know. I don't even know. Apparently... <laughs> There's a lot to expose, but you can look up playlists for child corn and they can direct message you on there. And we've had beta counts be, have hits on freaking Spotify. So we're everywhere. They can't hide anywhere, but the most Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, really? of course, like Snapchat's a no brainer. But as far as like social media, Instagram and Facebook, hands down. Yeah. Yeah, Snapchat, like, I'm not even on Snapchat, and I, I've had people ask me to make Snapchats. Like, it started out as a clever way to send dick pics, and now it's like they added all these filters that make it fun for kids and everything. I'm like, bro, I raised my kids not to keep secrets from their parents. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, safe adults do not ask kids to keep secrets. Snapchat just seems way too sketchy, like... That's not something I'm trying to be on, especially as like, as a married man, I have no damn business being on Snapchat, you know, disappearing <laughs> messages and all that. So, but, uh, it, it seems like the perfect weaponized platform for that, especially since they use filters to attract kids. Right. Yeah. No, that's a good, that's a really good point. That is one of our, our main things. Every Reaper, um, they have to have a Snapchat because that's one of their main forms of communication. We have ways around of like screenshotting and keeping, you know, a collection of what they're saying. They can't really delete it uh, on our watch because we have the software for it. But no, it's <laughs> it's really it's really bad. And you know what? Meta, we have if we don't have enough information on an individual to report them, but they have shown us CP. Um, so child pornography. Um, if they send something like that, we stop everything and we report them. We keep the conversation going. We don't let them know. Um, but we have had like sent screenshots straight to Instagram or Facebook and they don't do anything about it at all. So, you know, I would just be extra careful. My advice to parents is do not let your children on social media. And if you are, if you think it's going to be somehow beneficial to your children, um, it, it needs to be heavily, heavily regulated and you need to have those deep personal conversations with your children about what predators, you know, may look like. Because I think a lot of our kids, they go into it thinking that predators are scary and they're going to understand, but the predators are great manipulators and they know exactly what to say to get their trust, um, and to make them feel safe. And that's the problem is these kids just don't realize what's happening until it's happened. So from the convict end of it, from seeing, you know, when they go in and they're actually convicted, uh, a lot of the time you could tell. A lot of the time they look like Schmeagol from the Lord of the Rings, like, filthy habitses, murderers, thieves, you know, the little skinny, like, sucked up or the, like, the sort of chubby with the huge glasses that are this thick. But a lot of the time they look like Brian fucking Gosling, bro. You right, know what I'm right. saying? There were some absolutely and like objectively like good looking young youth pastor ass looking men in there that were there for atrocious child crimes. And I, I always try to drive that home to parents and to kids like they don't you can't tell they're really yeah. adapted at hiding themselves. That's how they survive. That's how monsters exist. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And personally, um, and this is honestly, it's a really horrible story, but growing up, I had a youth pastor. He was also a teacher at the middle school and I didn't have him as a teacher. I had his brother, but my family was really close with that family. Um, he was a youth pastor. He was a middle school teacher. Um, he used to comment on all of my Facebook stuff. Um, he would private message me and talk to me about youth group and come into youth group and all of these things. Well, one day him and his family randomly up and leave and move to Florida. And they're there for a couple of years. We're like, oh, that was weird. You know, I don't know. Maybe they just got tired of the, the small town life and want to go live big. And um, 
all of a sudden we see in the news a couple years later, this is recently, this was a couple months ago, um, he is arrested for six counts of statutory and um, he bails himself out and unalives himself. And we were all like, what is going on? Like, we just lost a family friend. And then we discover that it was because of this, you know, and it was just a huge awakening, I think, to a lot of people and even to myself. Like, I always know that that's the case. But when it's that close to home, it's like you really don't know. You don't know. And the reapers are instructed. You don't tell a soul. If you are actively reaping, don't tell a soul what you're doing because you never know who is working behind the scenes against you. It's really scary. So I want to circle back to something. You said that meta is basically useless when you present them with evidence that something mm -hmm. like this is going on. Yeah. What about the other platforms? And one platform I haven't even heard you mention in any of this is the one that the government says is a big danger to our kids, uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, there's predators on there, that they're, you know, a huge danger to the youth of America. It, mm -hmm. Is it, are there a lot of active predators on TikTok? I mean, there's predators everywhere. Um, but I will say TikTok, we have a, a, a much better chance of getting someone banned for inappropriate content. Um, thankfully, there's a lot more, you know, it's, it's much more difficult for a predator to contact a child privately on TikTok. If predators are contacting children on TikTok, it's usually in the comment section where I see it and then, you know, we expose them and all the good stuff. Um, so we don't really have a lot of hits for the private DMs on TikTok necessarily. Yeah. Okay. So the one that the government says is a huge threat to our children is right. actively more doing more to protect children mm -hmm. than the American meta. Isn't that funny? I, I mean, I, I think it just shows how much meta has paid off the government yeah. officials in this country. I mean, the, the court, what was it called? The hearing? That was insane. I don't know. Did you watch any of that? I watched as much as I could stomach because it was disgusting to me the way that they were treating the CEO from TikTok and the way that it just was like, it was like they were vultures picking bones. Oh, yeah. uh, and none of them they, knew what they were fucking talking about. They don't know what they're fucking talking about. They don't know. See, Mr. CEO of TikTok, can you explain to me how Wi-Fi works? Can my wife see if I'm looking up CP? Like, bro, you, you're running the country. You're making active right. laws, and you're so boomer and out of touch, you don't understand what a router and a fucking modem are, bro. Get the fuck out of there. Let somebody who's competent run. No, it's an, it's an, it's embarrassing to be an American sometimes. And I love my country. I, I grew up in the South. We have a ton of pride for America, but whenever I'm watching that shit, I'm like, this can't be fucking for real. Like this actually isn't real that this guy just asked if we're using Wi-Fi, And that means that China is hacking into our webcams. Like, I hate to tell you, but they don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> so, <laughs> If they could, they wouldn't be watching you. They wouldn't be watching you. Sorry. But, no, yeah, it, it is really disappointing to see that that is really a, the least of my problems is with TikTok. My main problem is with Instagram and Facebook. And like I said, we have made multiple reports. And you can ask any of my reapers. They will, they will back this and they will say the same thing. They've made multiple reports. And they will say they found no fault in it. You know, the funny thing to me is when I was watching that congressional hearing, it reminded me of, you know that I have a background in substance use. It reminded me of like heavy crystal meth tweakers because they thought that there were fucking... Uh, you know, cameras in their toasters and the vents. And it just reminded me of like old Ben spun out up for eight days, needed a cracker and a nap type of rhetoric. Like the fucking the Chinese shadow people are watching me from my bathroom type shit. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, it's, it's wild that meta has been able to pay them off enough to do a witch hunt. That's so inaccurate as far as the safety of children. Now, like, I don't care who has my information. Like, and this yeah. is coming from somebody who used to be a career criminal, like the information you're going to get from my cell phone or from my computer is 
absolutely not going to be damaging, nor is it going to lead anybody to any type of conquest of this country. It's not going to be a breach of national security if people know that, like, I shop for blenders when I see their ads, like their cool mm-hmm. sunglasses. I don't, you know, oh, shit, he stopped on a Nike ad. That dude likes Air Maxes. Oh, no. Uh, it's right. just ridiculous to me. And that's the thing. It's just like the whispers that Meta has put in the ears of some really, really powerful people, and they have the the power and the authority to change content creators lives. I think that's insane. The most discouraging part about it is we, the people are actively saying no. And the people that we voted to represent us are saying that's too effing bad. We're going to take away this. So many of us will be absolutely like done if TikTok's gone, you know, these are our employees, bitch, know your role. You know what I'm saying? Like we pay you. Mm -hmm. Listen to us. I I think that there's going to be some huge changes in this country coming up. Like, I'm super encouraged by what I see out of Gen Z. Um, And a lot of people don't like Gen Z and and they they think they're reckless or whatever. We need reckless. We need people that are willing to just lay down the law and stand for what they absolutely fucking believe. Because this country has become way too soft. And I love this country. I love the people of this country. I don't like our government. And I think that... There are some, there's some stuff in the wind coming. Well, Gabby, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you for enlightening us on the Wolf Project. Would you like to let anybody know how they can contact the Wolf Project if they want to get involved or donate? Absolutely. So once again, my social medias are on TikTok and Instagram, and that is the original Reaper double zero. And you can find more information about the Wolf Project at thewolfprojectinc.com, where you can message us, donate, volunteer, or get involved in the Reaper Network. Awesome. And I will also include links in the description of this video. Uh, If you're interested and you want to be able to just get easier access to be able to follow and support Gabby and her and what the Wolf Project are doing, because it's something that I absolutely believe in wholeheartedly. So I appreciate your time, Gabby. Thank you again. Thank you so much.